What's up, everybody? Welcome to Building Our Power. This is Gabby. Thank you for joining me, us, for another episode. As you can see, I'm flying solo. But we're going to continue the reading of Community Control of the Poor Community by Lorenzo Kumboa Irving. And we are now at the section called Building a Survival Program. Building a Survival Program. But there must also be some way to ensure economic survival in addition to providing new cultural role models. It is then when the commune, a network of community organizations and institutions, assumes its greatest importance. We will build a social political infrastructure to intervene in every area of working class life, food and housing cooperatives, class liberation schools, people's banks and community mutual aid funds, medical clinics and hospitals, rodent control, and pest extermination programs, cooperative factories, environmental protection, and upgrading groups, food growing groups and areas, community cultural and entertainment centers, the establishment of an intercommunal electronic communications network, land and building reclamation projects, public works brigades to build the cities, youth projects, drug clinics, and many other such programs. All these programs satisfy the deep needs of the poor community, but they are not solutions to our problem because although we build a survival economy now, we have to realize it will take a social revolution to overthrow capitalism and to obtain full economic self-sufficiency. But communes will help us organize the poor community around a true analysis and understanding of the situation. This is why they are called survival programs, meaning surviving under the system pending a social revolution. Building consciousness and revolutionary culture means taking on realistic day-to-day issues like hunger, the need for clothes and housing, joblessness, transportation, and other issues. It means that the commune must feel in the vacuum where people are not being properly fed, clothed, provided with adequate medical treatment, or are otherwise being deprived of basic needs. Contrary to the rhetoric of some leftist groups, this will not make people passive or dependent on us, rather than struggling against the government and demanding those things. Rather, it inspires confidence in the revolutionary forces and exposes the government as uncaring and incompetent. That is more of an incentive for the people to revolt and overthrow the government than holding political pep rallies, giving speeches, running for public office, and publishing manifestos, resolutions, or party newspapers that no one reads but their own members, like most WC and radical groups do now. Okay, we need a new way of confronting our oppressed situation. We need to unite our people to fight, and to do that, we need to educate, agitate, and organize. This is the only way we will win in a new war. Yes, 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 um... I'm sure everybody remembers the, our mutual A episode we did and then the episode we've done about community gardens and stuff like that. Um, this is something that we definitely are 100% for. These survival programs, these dual power type structures. And the fact that somebody would say that is going to make them dependent on us shouldn't we be dependent on each other like why is it a bad thing firstly and secondly they sound like some white ass bourgeois ass person to even say that like why are you why is that your first concern what if they grow dependent what if they are helped what if some people's lives are saved what if some children have food consistently heaven forbid Heaven forbid people don't immediately fall into line and do whatever it is that you tell them to do. Like, what the world? People, priorities. But that's something we were also talking about, like, as far as being living proof, letting people see for themselves that you're not talk. You're not just talk. Let them see the walk. Let them see what you're doing in the community. And people will be interested because... I think a lot of people do see that the government, especially now, the government is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And nonprofits, of course, at this moment, have filled that position. Um, But what do they do? They make excuses for the system and then just get people riled up and and send them to the polls. They're not really challenging people to think. They're not really uh, 
you know, helping cultivate, you know, uh, awakening those minds and, and opening eyes. That's not what they do. But you have leftists who are out here who are uh, providing for the people, who are clothing the people and things like that. You have people come to you, then you can start to, you know, put little seeds here and seeds there. And help them see, if they ain't already seen, that we literally are all we have. And that there's no reason to hold on to this system. Because as we can all see, it's not benefiting us. So... Yeah, so survival programs, definitely important. And that is definitely, I feel, the next step. We need to... There, There's organizations that's doing it. Kudos to them, props to them, Food Not Bombs in Memphis. They're doing some great things. Um, but as far as a widespread, just leftist coalition amongst everybody that we are taking responsibility for the city and making sure the needs of the community get met. I feel like that is a next big step that we all need to be trying to take. Okay. What follows is an example of the kind of survival program we need. One, we must have community control of all businesses and financial institutions located in our communities. And for those businesses not working in our best interests or not returning some of the revenue back to the community, we will seize said businesses and turn them into community cooperatives and mutual aid banking societies. Uh, I feel like we need to do that with all of them. Uh, why are we sparing businesses and financial institutions? All of them jokers need to get co-opted. Mm-mm. Every single one. Two, we must have community control of all housing and major input in all community planning of WC communities. If a piece of property or house is owned by a slumlord, either a private realtor or government agency, we will seize it and turn it into community housing co-op. We oppose urban renewal, spatial decomposition, yuppie gentrification, and other such middle-class schemes to drive us out of our communities. We must have complete control of all planning boards affecting and concerning the community. To enforce these demands, we should lead rent strikes, demonstrations, and armed actions in urban squatting squatting to drive landlords out and to take over property. Definitely, definitely, because I feel like that's one of the, if you're going to call it a battlefield, that's one of the, the, the hottest battlefields we have right now the fight against these slum lords landlords in general all every single one of them every single one of them are evil and they have a lot of power right now because housing is so expensive and so scarce that they can get away with murder half the time and have people living in just unsafe conditions physically mentally all of that and so i definitely can see the the need of rent strikes the need of 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 urban squatting and also the need of us having enough numbers to keep that stuff going and enough infrastructure to support everybody while they are doing these actions and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I feel like that is, I feel like, you know, people that's kind of scared or people that's, you know, you might get some liberals on to doing something like that. I don't know. Maybe you won't. Let me not, let me not say that. You may get some sock dams on something like that, you know. I feel like you can make a case for them to do that because I feel like it, it's hitting everybody. Republican, Democrat, leftist, whatever. Everybody is feeling the heat of this horrible, horrible housing crisis and rental rental crisis, to be honest. Um, three, we must have an independent, self-sustaining economy to guarantee full employment for all our people. We demand that the government provide massive economic aid to rebuild the city. The government spends billion a year for military killing machine. At least the amount should be redirected to meet the needs of all the oppressed communities. Ghetto housing must be rebuilt and turned over to the occupants. Adequate jobs and services must be provided to all community residents, including first preference for all construction jobs in the community. When public works brigades are assigned to rebuild the city, 
We must fight for grassroots control of all government funds allocated to the community through a network of mutual aid banking societies, community development corporations, and community development credit unions. <sighs> um, I mean, it, it, this sounds real good, and I see... I see where the heart at. You know, if we were talking about any other country than America, I'd just say this is feasible. But, uh, you know, just demanding money from the American government, I, I just don't see that happening. It, it just is not going to happen. They may throw a couple jobs with pressure, they may throw a couple jobs at you, but just throwing money into a poor community economically, there's not really a benefit for them to do that. And so I feel like that's one of the things that we may not need to focus our attention on or put that much energy on at the moment because... As we can see, we ain't got a stimulus check back yet again. After said check was promised, America is not giving out no more free money. And it's just, it is what it is. Um, four, reparations, the big payback. Governments and the rich class have stolen and oppressed us for centuries. They worked our ancestors as slaves, and after slavery, they continued to oppress, murder, and exploit our people. On down to the present day, we must build a mass movement in our communities to compel the government and the rich to provide the means for our community <laughs> redevelopment. They owe us for centuries of abuse and robbery. We must demand that reparations in the form of community development money and other forms be provided and placed in credit unions, cooperatives, and other mutual aid institutions in the working class communities so that they can start to obtain some measure of economic self-sufficiency. Yet we know that they won't give the money to us. We must fight them for it. Just like we must struggle to overturn the system of wage slavery today. Okay, yeah, they, they're they not going to give us the money. Um, we can see that now. We can see the liberals, you know, it has been a big movement for liberals to get fight for reparations and stuff like that. And um, it's kind of been a dud. Um, so, unless we're talking about maybe like a... a, a a general strike of all black people or just a general strike of poor people, possibly. Even then, we're not getting reparations. I'm sorry. We're not getting reparations. We're not getting anything economically from the government that will in any way shift the hierarchical system that we have. That will in any way make it so poor people don't have to take horrible jobs, work horrible hours, take horrible pay. Anything that will allow poor people to rest and give them the ability to choose where they want to live and choose where they want to work and choose their wages is something that's going to cause the entire pyramid to fall down. And again, this isn't just like a shit on this uh, um template episode but i do think that these things just need to be said so that we're not repeating the same thing over and over maybe back in his time it seemed like a feasible uh feasible thing to ask for but we've seen it we've seen the reparations movement and we've seen how nothing came out of it and we've seen how the government literally will not throw out pennies to help those that are struggling at all so to think that they would just bring millions of dollars to one of the poorest populations in their country, the backs of whom they have um, a, a, a surplus of labor that helps keep wages down and uh, uh, bodies in a jail that provide free labor, to think that they're just going to give money to a population who, if given said money, would disrupt this entire economic model. I'm sorry, friends. It's a no-go. It is a 100% a no-go. Um, five, in police brutality. We must organize self-defense units to protect the community and its organizations and remove the state's police forces. We demand criminal prosecution and jailing for all brutal or killer cops. No jurisdiction for the state judicial system in liberated zones. 
Okay, if we got the self defense to protect ourselves from the police, why were you asking for the police to be locked up? And what? And who gonna lock the police up? We've seen again. I don't. We've seen these folks is not getting locked up, and if they do, they'll have like a scapegoat or whatever. But these people are—they're not getting punished because this is their job. That's like being an ice cream man and somebody sending you to jail because you're giving a kid too much ice cream. This is your job. Okay. Okay. But I do agree with the community defense thing and the self-defense thing 1,000%. Because we literally, we have to, when, even when it comes to intra-communal affairs, we have to join together as a community in our own neighborhoods to make sure that we are protecting each other from whoever is trying to cause harm in our communities, from whatever side, because that's what a community does. We've been very individualized in the way we relate to even our neighbors. And everything is, this is mine, this is mine. You know, are we are we looking out for each other? Are you Are you watching your neighbor as they come in the house? Not in the creepy way. Are you checking on, checking on their cars? Are y'all checking on each other, making sure each other is okay if you ain't seen them in a week? Like, there's things that definitely need to change, and that's just, we've been programmed in American culture. But... I feel like, yes, community self-defense is one of the best things that we can do to help protect ourselves against police brutality. We must undertake large-scale programs to to train working-class people as doctors, nurses, and medical paraprofessionals in order to make free quality medical and dental care available to working-class people. We must demand that the government subsidies all such medical and dental training, as well as for the operations of clinics. But working-class people ourselves must establish and run the free medical clinics in all working class communities, whether urban or rural. This would include community anti-drug programs and drug rehabilitation clinics. Okay, I love this. I love this because this is something that uh, the Panthers, I forgot what city they were in. They had like a um, acupuncture clinic and a health clinic Um where they would provide, you know, medical care to people in the community. And they get a lot of their supplies by stealing. But they also get a lot of volunteers and stuff from from universities and stuff like that to help provide care for for the people. And something I was thinking, if you if you're just determined you're gonna have the government providing you with something, I say if the nonprofit is going to be here and they're going to be all in the way, we might as well use them to our own benefit. Somehow, we need to infiltrate those jokers to get all that information that they got, get, get in good with all the people who are, are volunteering, the de- like they said, the dentists, the, the medical people that are volunteering for these nonprofits and see if you can get them to help with what you got going on. Train you on basic things. Get people that are good at, at organizing people for BS like voting and get them to train you on how, how do you connect to people? How do you convince people to go to the polls? How do you do this? How do you do that? Where do you get these donations from? Where do you get this food from? Where do you get this money from? You know, stuff like that. There's things that we can that we can learn from nonprofits. You know, they're a tool. They're definitely a tool of, of capitalism. But some of the things that they do can be co-opted by us. Some of the people that they use can be used for the good of the people. 
We just gotta steal them in a non-criminal way. Um, but yes, okay. Seven. We must establish a community-controlled food system for self-sufficiency, and as a way of fighting to end hunger and malnutrition including a trucking network where houses, communal farms, farmer cooperatives, food cooperatives, agricultural unions, and other collective associations. This will include a protest campaign challenging the theft of farmland by agribusiness corporations and rich white land barons and reclaiming it for our projects. This is especially important now that the world has entered an economic crisis that will not be able to provide for our needs. We must force the government to provide the money for many of these projects to be administered under our total control instead of by a government agency. Okay, we're, we're going to skip the obvious part, but... I do like how he's talking about, you know, when he's talking about feeding the people, he ain't just saying get no damn community garden. He's saying we need infrastructure. We need warehouses. We need networks of trucking. We need land. We need tools. If we're if we're saying we're going to feed the community because that's really that's the only way you're going to do it. A little garden you're barely going to feed yourself. In order to do things right, we need mass mass goods and mass uh, materials to get this thing done right. Now, does it have to be ta- getting from the government? No, it does not. It can, be ta- it can be taken. And there are lots of people who are, quote, unquote, sympathetic for the cause, who have land that can be used it's just a matter of organizing those people and getting everybody together and getting people on board. We don't we do not have to ask the government for this stuff. There's so much time being wasted. Think about how much time you're gonna waste doing the protests and going up to Walsh to uh Washington D C and asking and pleading and trying to do a boycott and trying to do a march when you could just be going around and getting to it and doing it. Seeing who who are sympathizers, who are people that that are down for the cause, who are people that want to help in any way they can and any how they can, and getting organizing them and, and seeing how can we get this thing into fruition. Um, the poor must have control of its entire educational system from nursery school through high school. We must establish a working class liberation educational system, which meets the training needs of working class children, prepares them for job training and future economic security service to their community, and gives them a knowledge of themselves and an understanding of the true history and culture of working class people, as well as a program of adult education for community people whose earlier educational opportunities have been stunted. We must demand free higher education for working class people at full government expense, including remedial training programs for all who wish to participate. I definitely agree with the beginning part, revolutionary educational systems. That's the only way this thing is going to work. From the Ruta to the Tuta, from the babes to the elders, everybody, all of us need to be informed and need to be constantly learning at all times. And constantly thinking. And constantly, but but the, and that's the benefit of it. When your brain is always working, when you're always in environments where you're thinking critically and you're bouncing ideas off each other and and, and things like that. You have a community that is just ripe with innovation and talent and and all types of, of, of things and all types of minds that can help solve problems, that can help figure out how we're going to get to point A to point B, all types of stuff. Education is number one. Um... We must demand and fight for the release of all working class political prisoners prisoners, and victims of racial injustice. We must investigate and review the cases of all such prisoners who are the victims of government political repression and frame-ups and lead a mass campaign for their release. Some of our best revolutionary organizers could be rotting away in prison houses, and they are. And they definitely are. But I'm like, okay, if we got these numbers, why are you asking why aren't you just t- taking the kid, taking the kids, getting the folks out of out of the jail? 
Why aren't you helping these people escape? Why are we going to the government to ask? <laughs> Number 10, the central demand is for the working class control of the working class community. It's politics and economy. We have to take over our cities, establish municipal communes, and exercise self-government as a vital step. We are the majority in all of the cities of the world. And we should be able to control our own affairs, or at least obtain some autonomy. But as we should now be aware, we won't ever get this community's social power through voting for some capitalist politician or from passively depending for salvation on leaders or of one sort or another. We have to do it ourselves if we are ever to get on the road to freedom. And we're going to end it right there, guys. Let me know what you thought about the reading so far. Hit us up on our email as well as all social medias at Building Our PWR. This is Gabby, and this has been Building Our Power.